Church Online, thanks for joining us today. You know, I, I love 
hip hop music. Uh, growing up in my house, there were really only two kinds of music playing. Number one, there was Motown music, usually playing as my mom was cleaning. And then there was hip hop music, what my brother and I were listening to. Now, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. Maybe you don't like the way that the music sounds, or maybe it's hard for you to understand. And maybe if you do understand it, you don't like what you hear. And I get that. Rap can definitely speak about some silly things. But personally, I love hip hop, not just for the beats, but because of its ability to tell stories. You know, true hip hop is powerful in that way. It can communicate in ways that can help you understand someone's story and struggle. And I have a deep appreciation for Christians who use hip hop to glorify God, to talk about God, and also to communicate the struggle we feel following Jesus in this broken world. I was in Vermont earlier this week and driving home, I was listening to Rapzilla's Christian playlist and this powerful song came on by Bizzle. And he was, as he was rapping, he was telling the story of how he was watching the movie Ocean's 8. And it was strange because he found himself cheering for the bad guys. Like he wanted the thieves to get away. And that was strange because cheering for the bad guys isn't a normal thing, but it felt normal while he was watching this movie. And then he was like, you know, I don't, I don't, it's not like I watch Law and Order and I hope for the bad guys to get away on that show. And so it was strange. But then he realized what was happening. The director had strategically shaped his perspective. And then Bizzle connects it to real life or to reality. He says, there are two directors in this world. There's God and Satan, and both desire to shape our perspective. And the question becomes, which one do we listen to? Today, as we continue our new sermon series titled, Why Am I Stressed? We're going to see something that connects to what he was talking about. You know, last week we discussed how a lack of rest is often contributing to our stress, but that's not the only thing contributing to stress. Many times we are stressed because we're listening to the wrong voice. Last week I shared the following verse where Jesus says, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. You know, the devil or the thief, he wants to still kill and destroy you. And stress is one of his favorite weapons to do it. And he uses his voice to promote a perspective of stress. And if stress is, as we defined it last time, the fearful concern experienced when life's demands seem greater than our ability to meet them, then the devil is constantly whispering into our ears, look at all this stuff. Look at everything that's going on. What are you going to do? How you can't handle this. Do you ever feel that way? Well, yeah, it, 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 if you do, it's coming from the devil. And when we believe him, that's when we get overwhelmed. That's when we get stressed. However, Jesus has come to give abundant life. And God's speaking to us too. He wants to shape our story. It's why he says in his word, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. By the way, before I move any further, I want to make sure I honor the work that I'm basing this series upon. I'm currently reading the book, The Stressless Life by Vance Pittman, and his work influences much of what I'm gonna share over the next few weeks. And Pastor Vance points out that in this verse, Paul, who is inspired by God, presents us with two stories to choose from. You know, when we encounter stressors, or again, stressors being the, the daily circumstances in our lives that create the level of pressures, tension, and strain that can lead to stress, we either respond by being anxious, we respond by getting stressed out, or we can respond by talking with God, by praying. You know, think about your life right now. Are you overwhelmed? Are you stressed? You gotta ask why. And is it because you're listening to Satan's voice? Now, if your humble and honest answer is, yes, I kind of have been listening to that, 
I, I don't think that means that you're purposely following Satan. You know, and why I fully believe that the scriptures uh, are truthful when it says that we are all sinners. I think very few of us are willingly following the devil. However, the reason why it seems like it, at least when we, when it comes to our response to stress, is because he's tricked us. He's lied to us. He's deceived us. And when we believe his lies, it leads to stress, which leads to destruction. So how can we change this? Well, I believe the answer is simple. We get to know God. Those who know God listen to his voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. God's voice always leads us to peace. Like when Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me into peace. And then Isaiah 26 says, you keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Now, some of you might be thinking, I I, I know God and I'm still stressed. And I don't doubt that. But in the Bible, many times to know is not just to have an acknowledgement or an agreement or or it's not the, just the retention of information, but rather it's relational. It's a deep trust. It's an intimate experience. And some of us know God exists, but we don't know him. We don't know who he is or what he's like or why and how he acts the way that he does or what he promises. But when we do know him in this week, What's going to happen is we're going to experience supernatural peace instead of stress. And so let's look into God's word so we can get to know him. And I want to look at four things specifically that will help us know him. Let's start with this. Psalm 34 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. First thing I would like us to know about God is God is good. You've likely heard this before, and maybe you've even doubted this before. Honestly, as I was preparing this sermon, I began to think about ways that uh, I could logically prove to you that this was true. But then I realized I don't need to. Not that logic is incompatible or unnecessary to our faith, because it actually is. God created logic, and he uses it, and he wants us to use it. But God's goodness is true whether or not we personally believe it, whether or not I can prove it to you. As the Apostle Paul once said, let God be true, though everyone were a liar. Therefore, it's not my responsibility to prove God's goodness. But I do need to proclaim it. And I tell you confidently that God is good. And one thing you need to know is that the Lord is good to everyone. And he showers compassion on all his creation. All right. The next thing to know about God is that God is in control. Colossians 1 says, For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. You know, I I believe God's word when it says that he holds all things together. It means that he's in complete control. It means that when things go right, God's in control because every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. And when things go wrong, God is in control because as Joseph said, even when you intended to harm me, God intended it for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. God controls everything. He is always in control. He says, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. 
You know, I've come to know this personally in my own life. When Janelle and I first met, we would hear people, uh, other people talk about these miraculous God stories, you know, sometimes what we call uh, a testimony. And, and we would actually say, you know, we don't really have a testimony. And then God was like, oh, you want a testimony? All right, buckle up. And you've heard me tell the story before about my oldest son, George, and his birth. And, and, and first of all, let me just mention, Janelle wasn't even supposed to be able to get pregnant, but she did. And, 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 and God did the medically impossible because he is good and he is in control. But then Georgie had a traumatic birth and he was born dead and he had to be revived only to have uh, severe brain damage. But guess what? Even when things had gone wrong, God was still in control. And God proved that to me when he spoke to my heart that he was going to heal my son. The doctor said the damage was done, but May God be true and every man a liar. And you know that today God was right. My son is healed. But the range of God's sovereignty, which means that God is in control, the range of his sovereignty didn't stop there because a couple years later, Janelle's cousin had a baby girl and something was wrong. Then that baby's stomach wasn't working properly and the baby couldn't eat and, and, and it was bad. But I remember messaging her and sharing the story of Georgie's miraculous healing. And, and truly, I believe one reason God gave us that story is so it could strengthen Janelle's cousin's faith and remind her that God is always in control. And like our story, she now has a story of her daughter being miraculously healed. I know not everyone has the story of miraculous healings, and I don't know why, but I do know that God is in control and he knows why. And we can trust in his control. Which brings me to the next thing. We can trust God because God loves us. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Exodus 34 says, The Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. God loves us. Let that sink in for a moment. Let the truth of God's word, which is living and active, begin to right now penetrate into your soul and shape it. Know that God loves you. Maybe your willingness to believe that has been impacted by unstable people or circumstances. And that's understandable, but it's not right. Because God is the source of all things. He's the standard. We get our reference point from him and not from other things or people. Meaning while our love should reflect God's love, our love doesn't define God's love. God alone defines his love and people's unfaithfulness and their inability to love correctly doesn't impact God's faithfulness and God's love. As 2 Timothy says, if we are faithless, God remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. And if God cannot deny himself, it means that he is always perfect love. And that love, by his own undeniable and unchanging promise, is toward us. He loves us. I love what the author, Dane Ortland says about God's heart in his book, Gentle and Lowly. You know, in Exodus 34, we read it just a moment ago, Moses wanted to know more about God. And so he made a request to see God's glory. And this is what happened. Again, it says, the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. We could spend a long time here, but I want us to look at that phrase, slow to anger. This should surprise us, especially those of us who know that we are sinners. We constantly rebel against God. And you'd think that he'd be ready to either give up on us or take us out. I know that when my mom growing up was frustrated with me when I wasn't listening, she would say, I brought you into this world and I'll take you out. When I was disobedient, when I was sinning, she was ready to bring her wrath and judgment. And wouldn't we expect 
a holy God to be the same way? But listen to Dane's commentary on this phrase. He says, God doesn't have his finger on the trigger. Unlike us, who are often emotional dams ready to break, God can put up with a lot. He's slow to anger. This is why the Old Testament speaks of God being provoked to anger by his people dozens of times. But not once are we told that God is provoked to love or provoked to mercy. His anger requires provocation. His mercy or his love is pent up, ready to gush forth. God needs no provoking to love. Did you hear that? It means that God loves you. It means that his default response towards you is not anger, not judgment, not disappointment. It's love. When he looks at you, love is the first response just waiting to be released from his heart. God can't wait to pour out his love on us because he loves us. And it's so important that we know this about God. And since we're speaking about Exodus 34, let me pull another phrase from this passage. Again, it says, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. That phrase, steadfast love, it's the Hebrew word has said, and it means loyalty. It means commitment. It's God's supernatural loving commitment to be with us. And that's the fourth and final thing I'd like for us to know about God today. It's that God is with us. You know, if you want to make a lot of money in life, don't, don't become a pastor. You know, if you've ever been to the church in person, you probably have seen me wear, you know, Jordans uh, as shoes. And don't let that fool you. I didn't buy those. My brother did. I can't afford them. There have been times when I can barely afford to take my family grocery shopping. And, and right before COVID, we all went to, to Disney World and we spent a week there. We actually stayed on the Disney Resort at an actual Disney hotel. And staying a week at Disney, that ain't cheap. I can't afford that vacation, but my dad can. And he's the one who paid for us to go. And he was with us the whole time. And usually if I was at a place like that, I'd be stressing out trying to figure out how we can save money or where we can eat somewhere cheap. But since I was with him, I didn't have to worry about that. I had peace because he was ready to take care of everything. And in an even more infinite way, the same is true when God is with us. No matter what we face, if God is with us, there is nothing to worry about. He has us. And the ultimate proof of that is at the cross. Because you know what? Our sin is our biggest problem. It has doomed us to eternal death. It's our biggest reason that we should stress. But on the cross, Jesus fixed everything. And by the cross, God offers salvation to the world. And when we're willing to turn from our sin and put our faith in Jesus, God will forgive us. He will make us new. He will fill us with his powerful Holy Spirit. And he will eternally care for us. And knowing this should change us. It should change how we live, how we respond to life. As the Apostle Paul once wrote, he said, What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not even spare his own son, but gave him up for all, us all, won't he also give us everything else? We got to know this, that God is good. God is in control. God loves us, and God is with us. Therefore, we don't need to worry. We don't need to believe Satan's story of stress. Instead, we can know God and live with supernatural peace. And so as we close, let me ask, are you stressed today? Well, maybe it's because you don't know God like you should. And even if that's the case, there's good news. Let me tell you that God wants to be known, and he wants you to know him. Jeremiah 29 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. 
He hasn't made it difficult. In fact, for what can be known about God is plain to us because God has shown it to us for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature has been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So we are all without excuse. If you will draw near to God, he promises to draw near to you. There are two directors telling two different stories about the same world. And one of them is trying to stress you out so he can destroy you. But the other one, God, he's leading you to an abundant life of peace. And so which voice are you listening to? And today, or after today, I hope it's God's voice. In this life, you are always going to face stressors. You're always going to face circumstances that have the potential to stress you out. That's just the reality of living in the present broken world. But in Christ, you don't have to choose stress. You can have peace instead. Peace being that the, the sense of divine favor arising from confidence in God and your relationship with him. The fact that you know him should give you confidence to have peace instead of stress. That's what God wants you to have. And so let me just give a few steps for us to begin living this way. You know, the first thing we can do is to make sure that we truly know God. Just a moment ago, I said, in Christ, you don't have to choose stress. You know, in Christ is the operative word or operative phrase there. And if you're not in Christ, meaning you have not repented of your sins, you have not put your faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior, and you have not been born again into new life, that means that you are still a slave to sin, which means you will always choose stress because that's what Satan, your master, has chosen for you. But all that can change today by putting your faith in Jesus. Put your faith in Jesus and receive his peace. You know, the next thing you can try is to know that when you face stressors, you can remind yourself about the truth of God. The Bible says that the truth shall set you free. And that includes having freedom from stress. And so when you see those stressors coming at you, when you face those circumstances, instead of letting them get you stressed, speak to those circumstances the truth of God. Tell them God is good. God is in control. God loves me and God is with me. And then wait and watch by faith. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Finally, and this is connected to the second suggestion, but remember who God is. You know, God is the Lord of all creation. He has no rival. There may be two directors telling stories in this world, but they are not equal. The Apostle John says, little children, you are from God and have overcome them or overcome the enemy. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And he also writes, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. You know, I think it's appropriate to connect stress to both darkness and Satan or darkness and he who is in the world. And that makes stress kind of scary. But God is greater than the greatest darkness and he can overcome the most impossible amounts of stress. And so remember, there is nothing God can't handle or heal. And when you know God, you will win. Let's pray. Father, be near us today. We seek you. We draw near to you because we need your peace. You promise that when we come to you with our stressors, you'll give us a supernatural peace. And so please do that today. We need that today. We don't want to believe Satan anymore. We don't want to be stressed out. We want to trust in the Savior. Our hope is in you, Jesus. We believe you are good. We believe you are in control. We believe you love us. And we believe that you are with us. And because of that, we will win. We will have victory over stress. We will have peace that surpasses all understanding. And so take away our stress today. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hey, thanks for joining us for Church Online. If this was your first time joining us, fill out a Connect card. We would love to say hi to you and even send you a gift. Also, if you have any prayer requests, would like to know more about the River Church, or you have decided to follow Jesus today, we want to hear from you. And there is an easy way to do that on our website, riverchurchct.com, or you can follow the links in the comments below, or you can text the keyword TRC Connect to 94000. God bless you guys. Have a great day.